Some wars are fought over religion, some wars are fought over resources. But in 1982, one particular war transpired over a remote group of islands in the South Atlantic. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. In today's installment, we'll be giving you 5 fascinating facts about a famous historic event, the Falklands War, otherwise known as the sovereignty conflict between the United Kingdom and Argentina. Number 5. The Argentine Junta didn't expect a war to begin. Six years after President Isabel Martinez de Perón was removed from power, the military junta of Argentina pinpointed a unique opportunity when a group of scrap metal workers raised an Argentine flag on the British-occupied South Georgia island. General Leopoldo Galtieri and Admiral Jorge Anaya orchestrated a plot to invade and claim the Falkland Islands. And why not, right? After all, the military leaders didn't seem convinced that the UK would even respond and the dictatorship needed to demonstrate their tactical prowess in order to influence the Argentine public during the country's economic crisis. So it did actually seem like a boss move to the Junta. But they were wrong. Not only did the United Kingdom take issue with the invasion, but they were ready for war. Number 4. The slow transmission of images led to questionable reporting. In the preceding weeks before the official invasion, the UK had already commenced Operation Corporate, given the drama at South Georgia Island. But the visuals of the war unfolding didn't immediately reach the masses like they would today. Just think about it, no Twitter, no Facebook. It took some time for media to travel back then, and slanted propaganda was definitely a real issue. Sure, Vietnam taught the Americans how not to promote a false narrative, but even so, the Argentine publication Gente went right ahead with a headline, Estamos ganando, which means we're winning. And then there was the UK press, also behind in spreading real-time events given the slow upload time from the technology, with TV coverage being delayed by as much as three weeks. The British media were also willing to provide a heightened sense of drama by publishing questionable headlines of their own, notably The Sun's headline, Stick It Up Your Junta. Number 3. It's the largest air-naval combat operation since World War II. The conflict wasn't a matter of crossing borders to establish power. It was a matter of crossing 8,000 miles of the South Atlantic, at least for the UK. That's why military scholars find this war so fascinating, as the aerial and maritime operations revealed invaluable data on tactical operations. In a pivotal moment, Argentina's ARA General Belgrano was sunk one month after the initial occupation, with 323 nationals losing their lives. This one event alone accounted for approximately half of the country's total amount of casualties, with the Brits ultimately losing 255 of their own. There were three Falkland natives who also perished. Number 2. Argentina lost the war on their own turf, or so they thought. After the ARA General Belgrano went down, almost the entire Argentine naval fleet returned to the Malvinas, otherwise known as the Falkland Islands. Yet in a major twist, the Junta unleashed a heavy blow to the Royal Navy by sinking the HMS Sheffield only a couple days later. The war would soon be decided on land, with the epic battle for Stanley representing the defining moment. After crossing the Sussex Mountains, the British forces made an aggressive attempt to end the dispute once and for all, or at least the war itself, as they went all in by launching three separate attacks over the course of two days. Once the UK took hold of Port Stanley, Argentina officially surrendered. Number 1. It had major political ramifications for both UK and Argentina. Three days. That's how long it took for the military dictatorship to fall apart. The failed war for Argentina also meant that the president Leopoldo Galtieri was swiftly removed from power. Looking back, the UK's Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher unsurprisingly benefited from the war. But what did it mean for Argentina? Well, it meant democracy. And given the international dirty war of the military dictatorship that had previously terrorized Argentine society, the experience became a source of creativity for the country's artists. In fact, rock music emerged in Argentina by way of the Falklands War, along with a lasting sense of freedom. So does the Falklands War make a little more sense to you now? If not, you can always watch this video again and again and again and again. For more three day long top tens and three week behind top fives, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. One always hopes for an early conclusion, but one's learned throughout this whole Falklands campaign that things tend to take longer than you expect.